Today, so what I want to talk to you about is reasons to praise. Reasons to thank. I will require, <coughs> excuse me, I will require, I will request that you, you visit the message at the Rising Stars Assembly. It should be available at our Telegram channel. Just try and receive the ministry of this morning. Because every ministry comes different. I just want to share a brief moment with you and we will actually practice thanksgiving today. Psalm 90, sorry, Psalm 9, verse 1 to 2. Psalm 9, and verse 1 to 2. Psalm 9, and verse 1 to 2. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will praise you, O Lord, not with a part of my heart, <clears throat> not with a part of my life, well, with my whole heart. While that scripture is still there in front of us, I want to let you know that our entire life is hidden in our heart. The heart of a man is a summary. The summary of the entirety of the life of that person. What we hate, what we love, what we value, what we treasure, what we want, what we don't want, what we fear, what we crave, what we desire. So the scripture says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. In other words, with the whole of me. The scripture says, God your heart with above all guard your heart with all diligence from for out of it flows the issues of life so life flows from the heart failure flows from the heart success flows from the heart flourishing poverty your heart poverty lives in your heart lack lives in your heart before you are lacking in the pocket lacking in your store you are first of all lacking in your heart before you fail in your action, you're first of all failing in your heart. The heart is where the enemy mounts a whole lot of pressure in battle. The first spot of attack before the enemy brings you down is your heart. He attacks your heart, sends arrows to your heart to cause fear, to cause lust, to cause defeat, depression, different things. And when your heart yields to them, then he gets you. But the scripture says, I will, I will praise you. Not with some of my heart, O oh Lord, but with my whole heart. I want you to rise to your feet and make it your personal declaration. That scripture on the screen, I say it loud want to go I will praise you oh Lord with my whole heart take it again I will praise you oh Lord with my whole heart take it again I will praise you oh Lord with my whole heart amen be seated the next line in that verse says I will tell I will tell, I will tell. In case you did not understand what the scripture says, I will praise you with my whole heart. The next sentence or the next clause in that long ten sentence says, I will tell of all your marvelous works. How many of his marvelous works? How many? More. Yes, I will tell. Family, there is a time for meditation. The scripture makes us realize that it's time for everything. There is a time to meditate. Meditation is a private thing. Meditation is speaking in privacy. In meditation, you speak to the word and the word speaks to you. Meditation is actually meditation because it's a matter of the heart. It's a place of privacy. And intimacy but when you talk about telling telling means 
verbalizing beyond your hearing and letting other things, other people, other entities become witness of what the Lord has done for you. So that scripture says, I will tell of all your works, all, not just, not just all your, all your marvelous works. I will tell. I want to, to I want to draw your attention to a satanic dimension of the culture of the area that we find ourselves. I have to localize it and particular, uh, particularize it because somebody watching me on, t on TV, somebody watching me on the social media, somebody listening on radio from distant places across the world, across the world on the Christ radio, maybe in a different context, but here, the location where we are, people don't talk about what God does. People talk about what the enemy does. So songs, songs that sell among our people are songs talking about Uswaufok, Uswaubun, Mponam, things of the family, let me live. Enemies, just let me live. And people sing those songs emotionally and feel very good. You know, you can be foolish and feel good about foolishness. Absolutely. So, the, the, plan, the plan of God is to change cultures through the gospel. A gospel that has, the, a culture that has received the gospel is a culture that has been, that has become the word of God. That speaks the word of God, that thinks the word of God, that lives the word of God. So here we have people who are elders. We are pastors in families, and then when marriage is about taking place, they are the ones who say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. By that, they twist the word of Jesus Christ, and by that, they blaspheme, saying you can sacrifice to Satan. So Satan is Caesar. And then, when you go to church, give to God what belongs to God. And they will say, but I am an elder, but you know I'm a pastor. Whatever church you go to, but I'm a pastor, but I also go to church. I also read the Bible. I, a village chief will tell you, but I am an elder in church and all of that. The reason is because the culture has not been touched by the gospel. Long after white missionaries have left, the gospel is yet to reach our people. So right now, the plan of God is that for you as an individual, you have to watch your language. Because language is one of the, one of the cultural expression of a people. Language. What you say, how you say. Your mind is the cultural thing. Expresses itself with your word, with, in words. I will speak of the marvelous works. I will tell. So here, yeah, People feel if you tell testimony in church, witches and wizards in church will attack you. And because they think that way, it becomes true for them. And so people fear the devil more than they fear God. People tell of witches and wizards and people actually make money from setting up what they call churches. That has to do with nothing. God is not talked about. God is not revealed. The only thing there is finding out who is he for. Finding out who is a witch, who is a wizard, who wants to kill who. They are not telling of the marvelous works of God. I don't know how many of you are like that in this place. That when you go to a church, every preaching is nonsense until there is a time that they will say, hey, and me. And then for you, and it is not because you heard of the marvelous works of God that you heard that, God, that you heard that there is something between your legs that will kill you. That is the only truth that is in that place. You are a pagan walking around in churches and today the Lord wants to have an encounter with you. Say, I will tell of the marvelous works of God. If there is anything that one can say about me, 
is that I am loud in telling of the marvelous works of God. Such a beautiful thing. If you don't know that about me, then you don't know me. I tell. I don't hold it back. I hold back everything that is not beautiful. I hold back because it's not beautiful. So why, why talk about it? I tell the marvelous works of God. I want you to rise to your feet. Sorry if I tell you a hundred times. Just rise. Just rise. For every time that you tell of the enemies who walked against you, for every time you tell of the boss that said you will never be promoted, every time you tell of the witch or the wizard that you suspect is the reason why this is not that and that is not that, all that you have been doing is that you have been magnifying the enemy higher than God in your life, which is why your life looks like the way it is, the way you look, the way things are, and the direct result of what you have been telling and whom you have been talking about. The one that you tell about and talk about is the one who has power over you. Is the one that influences you. I want you to bring yourself to the place of redemption and healing by telling the marvelous works of the Lord. Raise your right hand. Say, I will, I will. tell of your marvelous works. Then read the entire verse. Go, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. Give a shout of praise. Be seated. I will tell of all your marvelous works. How wonderful is that? I talk about his marvelous works, Lord of mercy. I boast of his marvelous works. To be a Christian is, is a good news teller. Good news teller. Watch your lips this week. Watch who you talk most about. Watch what you talk most about. And draw conclusion who you are and who has the greatest influence over your life. You see, you can pray seven days fasting, dry, and people glory in fasting. Fasting without water, with fasting without brushing their mouth, fasting without seeing the sun and the bows. And after all the fasting, they still look like they have always looked. What were you talking about during the fasting? What was the attention in the fasting? Whose name rang louder and came more frequently? That's your future. That's how you look like. That's the influence you have. So that is not about fasting. It's what you do in your fasting. Say, I will tell. That's it. I will tell. There are certain people I don't expect. I can't permit them to talk to me. I am careful about giving people access to my life. Very careful. When I took a decision to resign, I, I had a ministry relationship. And I thought I, I needed to honor the person. The person is not here this time. To say, I have made up my mind, I'm going to move forward. After I called the person and shared with the person. And as I began talking, the person broke down crying. Like, I told the person I was dying, or people had died. My relationship with the person ended from that, name, that moment till now. I don't ever hope to have that relationship. Is it repairable? Absolutely. That's how fragile it can be for me. Is it repairable? I don't hope to repair it except God gives me instruction. Crying at me, talking about the conviction in God tells me we don't belong to the same world. It is a mistake for me to give you access to speak to me. You don't have anything to build me. I value who speaks to me. I value who speaks to me. 
Because what you hear is what you will say. And what you say is what will influence you. I just want you to watch. Just watch. Because you can say you are a believer, you are born again. But you are a satanist. You don't know God. The greatest influence in your life is not God. I will tell. Just want you to be sure. I will tell. So during this season, people give hand over power of God to economy. I'm planning to be poor. I'm planning to be sick. I'm planning to die. I'm planning to be hopeless and be and be helpless. So every time poor nation, poor nation, I'm poor nation. For now, the poor nation, poor nation, poor no. Things are so difficult. Things are. You call somebody. How are you surviving? Things are so difficult. Somebody calls you before you. Yeah, things are so difficult. How are you? Things are so difficult. Things, then you should die. God is not. What is happening in Nigeria? God is still a marvelous, marvel working God. I will tell in the face of things not working. I will tell in the face of fear. I will tell. What do you tell? Who do you tell? And what do you tell somebody about? I will tell. What a beautiful thing. I just wanted to draw your attention to your telling. So as you are leaving this place, what are you telling somebody? What are you talking to somebody about? Who is telling you what? Who is telling you somebody? A cousin of mine is late. Some years ago, a very terrible person found her way into our space. Lived on our compound. My late dad, gone, and he and my brother alone were left at home. And this woman was there. And he had this strange disease. And he believed God. He was praying every day, fighting to stay alive. And this strange evil woman, after going out in the morning, come back in the afternoon, will go straight to his door and knock. And say, have you heard that so-so person has died? Another day, go out. Aya, have you heard that the other person, hold on, bam, bam. Give a young dog, you know, I said I should tell you. So one day, <laughs> this man gathered strength and faced her at the gate <laughs> of his house. He said, let me tell you, I don't care how many people die. And why you have been coming to tell me all those who have died. Let me tell you, the next person that will die will be you. As for me, I will not die. That was the last day of that meeting. After that, she never, never came back to report. She will go around everywhere in the village. She will find out who has died, the latest death, and she will come and broadcast. Because telling brings influence. I will tell. So who is closest to you? And what does your closest person tell you? That people you cannot permit to talk to you. Find out what do they tell you. And what is the effect of what they tell you in your life? They tell you things and you wanted to achieve something. You get discouraged. You believe you will not succeed. Oh, you don't have what it takes to succeed. Because of after somebody has told you, ah, somebody tried that and did not succeed. And you think, have you found that nobody has ever made it there? <laughs> and because of that, you begin to think. It is true and you stop doing it. And an opportunity is gone. I will tell. I want you to take a decision today. The next time you will tell somebody something, the next time somebody will hear from you, you will tell of the marvelous works of the Lord. Glory to God. Rise to your feet again. Let's make that scripture ring. Let it ring louder and louder. I will praise you. Oh Lord, will with my whole heart I will tell of all your marvelous works. Shout hallelujah. That's a cure to fear. That's a cure to depression. It's a cure to shame. It's a cure to failure. I will tell. If he was marvelous yesterday, he's still marvelous today. I will tell. If he's marvelous today, he will be marvelous tomorrow. 
I will tell. So when somebody comes to talk to you about someone who has failed, tell that person of the marvelous works of the Lord. When a doctor tells you there is no hope of survival, there is no chance of making it, once he's done telling you, start telling the doctor the marvelous works of the Lord. When somebody tells you, you will see him. Tell the person of the marvelous works of the Lord. When somebody tells you, over my dead body, don't quarrel. Tell of the marvelous works of the Lord. And somebody tells you, over my dead body, sister, 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 sorry, I have something to tell you. Say, what is that? I've just told you, over my dead, over my dead body, you will not be promoted. I'm so, so sorry, sir. I've been having this plan to tell you this. Say, what is it? begin to tell your testimony. When I was young, they told my mother that I will never survive. My mother trusted the Lord and I survived. That is how I'm walking with you now. I just wanted to let you know that the Lord has been faithful in keeping me. He said, is that what you tell, wanted to tell me? So I wanted to tell you of the marvelous works of the Lord. And let him go and bury himself. Praise God. The doctor tells you it's over. And before he goes, hey, doctor, please come. I, so I wanted to tell you this yesterday, just that you didn't come yesterday. Bring out one or two testimonies from your back and present before him one after another. He said, why are you telling me this? I'm telling you of the marvelous works. It's the same yesterday, today, forever. If he helped me yesterday, He's not tired of helping me again. Good night, doctor. <laughs> Praise God. Not doctor, he could do it. Be seated. No, before you sit, tell somebody, I am telling you now of the marvelous works. Oh, the marvelous works. Oh, man. Glory to God. Be seated. Patrick. Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangi Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.